Um, two two other quick points. One, uh, I think Erling Holland has more goals than they do for this uh, calendar year as well. I think he's at like Good. 54 and they're at 53. Uh, and <laughs> so not to good. shout him out, but he's the call out just how It's not a big deal. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, but <laughs> but to, to, to kind of call it out again, because I just think it's bad content. It just isn't good. That London is blue podcast again put out the the injured eleven and said where would this team finish and I wanted to respond eighteenth, eighteenth you got that team gets relegated. I I just don't I don't know, on based on what they have seen from any of these guys, what makes them think that they are going to like move the needle. I I will give you Nkunku. I think Nkunku is a great player. He is not a striker. He's a winger. He's not like a, an out and out goal scorer. Nicholas Jackson, he can't. I mean, the, the clip of him hitting a three hundred percent bigger goal, which would have made his his shot go in that like TikTok. That mm-hmm. I, that's every shot he takes. It's Alexi Lalas right there for the, you. That's Timo oh, Werner dude, it's, two point oh. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 yeah. so insane. Like how they constantly they move the goalpost of like their expectations and how like. Well, we're, we'll be okay because, like, at this point, we'll get this guy back and, like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Half their people are fucking defenders. They can only play two center backs. Like, I don't know what they're they're thinking about doing. But the Does defenders are the best Re- scorers. That's <laughs> yes, actually a good point. Does anyone Premier realize... Premier Republican Party. Does anyone but... realize that, ultimately, it's clearly a culture issue? Because whenever people leave Chelsea on transfer, they tend to be better. So, like, yeah. it's... It's it's something that clearly has gone regime to regime because this was also an issue before Bully came, in my opinion. But like, for sure, I don't know. Yeah. And 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 it's all well. And also, it's the part where I know I think some people on this podcast don't think Potch is like an amazing coach. Like, I don't think he's the worst coach, but I don't think he's where he was with Tottenham. But the other thing is like. I think he's someone who needs time to rebuild this, and I don't think he's going to get it, which is just going to put them countlessly in their loop. So, like, they either yeah, need to was... bite the bullet and fight through all of this, and they might actually make it to the other side. The The real thing to watch out is, do they actually have the patience to do this? Because if not, we're going to have this conversation for the next four or five years. Yeah. I think, Dylan, that's a really good point with it being culturally. Because, I, again... Th- she was nice enough to, to give me her take and I, I want to respect it and like I would love to actually have her on and, and be like, yo, like talk us through this. But I do think that the the well has been poisoned there to an extent. It had it has to have been. Um, and again, to your point, that was, that's what I was thinking. I was like, I know that I'm going to see someone post Potch out this week and then next week. And, and we've said this the whole time. What's important about this Chelsea team this season and getting the system going, I know he's only had five games, and getting these players going is their first seven games for Chelsea were winnable. Or, or they were teams that they should be competing with uh, or should be beating, in, in our opinion, obviously. And the next seven are much harder. And if they don't Dude, have it I... figured out by then, man, but it's they might be not tough. Have it, but they might not have it figured out, but like, I feel like Arsenal is a great example of this. Maybe yeah. not to an extent of like the toxic part, but like when Arteta started, like think what three, four years ago, they were bad. Like we were mm-hmm. making jokes about Arsenal the entire time, but they were but eighth. in a similar spot. They ha- what? But they finished eighth. No, like, I I get that, but like there was, I but let's put it this way because they could be what they're fourteenth now. Like they could finish eighth by the time this season's done, but like. In, in what I'm referencing, they were awful to start the year. They were young. They bit, They actually fought through it, and they eventually started to show some progression. And then the next year kind of was the same because, again, you're working through some working, like some, some growing pains, and then now look where they are. I just don't know if Chelsea will have the same patience, and that's where I'd be worried if I was a Chelsea's fan is that they aren't yeah. going to sit through and yeah. live through I think, that to, Dylan, to your point, like Kroenke and – Arteta had to wade through Arteta out for a year and a half at the very least. Maybe two. Correct. And, yeah. and, and that's how they did it. Michael? Um, so, just you guys talking about their next games. They have Brighton in the Cup. I don't think they're 
I, I've seen multiple Chelsea fans just be like, we don't care about that. It's like, okay, cool. Don't care about the EFL Cup, whatever, fine. You haven't been close to winning anything. Wouldn't it be nice to just, like, win a game? Uh, Fulham away. Burnley away. Okay, and then this it. is... Those are the next two. And then you go home against Arsenal, home against Brentford, which maybe that's how Brentford are playing right now. That might be a win for you. Away to Spurs, home against City, away to Newcastle, home against Brighton, away to United. Okay. You're not you're not winning any of those. Mm-mm. You have no shot. You, Nick thinks you think five points? I think I think the line for the bold take here is I want four and a half points over under through December 